Woo, we, folks, woo! Hey, man, you know, I'm talking about when it comes to bluegill and shell cracker. Well, that's the reason I have the disease I have right now. It's called fish brain. It started when I was six years old using a simple cane pole on a bluegill and shell cracker bed. Now there's a lot of different ways, as y'all know, to catch them. But one of the ways that I really love to use, or one application that I love to use, is ultralight reels and rods, very light line, two pound, one pound test line, under a cork and a jig. I'm gonna tell you why. I love to use little jigs and tip it with either a little piece of red worm night crawler or even an earthworm the reason why is because when the when because i mean they're going to be biting like crazy they're really hot one day after a full moon that's the best time to catch them folks they really start accumulating on these beds anywhere from two to three days before a full moon and two or three days after so you have about six or seven days where you really catch these fish uh, when they're bedding. But I love to tip it because when, when they slow down in the bed, oftentimes what happens, if you'll just keep that worm on there, a little piece of tippet, I call it a tippet, on that jig, you'll start catching the better fish, like the shell cracker. Shell cracker and bluegill often bed together and that's when you'll catch the better fish. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. But they are a delicious eating fish. And there's a lot of different ways to find these beds. One way, well, is a good pair of sunglasses. I like to troll around in the back end of coves real slow and actually visually look for these beds. If the water's clear enough, you can do that. Another way, if it's a calm morning, early in the morning, you can actually smell them or you can see kind of like an oil slick on top of the water. But if the water clarity is not real clear and you can't see to the bottom, a lot of times what I look for with these glasses are juveniles about that long, three, four inches long. They'll be all over the top of the water. Usually the, the adult bluegill and shell cracker, the mature ones, are underneath bed. The reason why these fish, the smaller ones, are hanging around the beds, they're predators. They're, they're actually going to eat the eggs or try to. That's the reason these bluegill and shell cracker will bite so readily one day after a full moon. They're protecting their eggs. They're angry. They're aggravated. Any intrusion is going to either get eat or they're going to bump that fish or out of the bed. There's a lot of fish that interrupt or try to interrupt them from bedding. Um, shiners, golden shiners, small catfish, um, juvenile bluegill and shell cracker. You also have an occasional bass uh, be close to the bed and they're going to be feeding on whatever they can get in their mouth. There's a lot going on around a bluegill bed. Hey, woo! Ooh, ooh. I'm using two pound test line, vicious, high vis, a small float, and a little old bitty jig. Let me show it to you. Right there, little bitty one. I have that tab with Palomar on it because it's two pound test line. Tip it with either a red worm, a piece of night crawler, and in this case, I'm using fiddle worms, or which is a type of um, uh, earthworm. <laughs> I'll get it out in a minute. Anything like that. Another good option, of course, would be crickets. Now, it don't take a big piece at all. Probably about half of that right there to get the job done. 
but uh like i like i'm saying i tried with a jig and they didn't want to touch it it's just the jig alone but when they get locked down on bed it don't make any difference what crosses that bed look here there's a fish it's full of them but you gotta have a tippet on there now tomorrow when they lock down on bed it'll be a different story i've found this to be true many a times this is a good one right here golly now that is some mighty fine eating right there folks I like them a lot better than crappie. I just scale them, cut their heads off, and fry them whole. That's how Mama Sue likes them. That's how I like them. I used to fillet them, but I'm gonna tell you, the skin gives that fish a lot better taste. A whole lot better taste. In my opinion, everybody's different on that, but watch this. Watch this right here. See, he's done on there. Yeah. Way. Now this is the way I prefer fishing. Matching the tackle to the fish that you're you're fishing for. See, I'm having a hard time with this bluegill. Or shell cracker. This could be a shell cracker. He's pulling off a hard. But I'm having a hard time. Now it's just a big gill. Because of this light outfit. Look at there. My goodness. Now the limit right here is 30. You can catch 30 of these. And uh, at this rate, it won't take long to catch 30. I guarantee you, we're going to have to get us another earthworm. We call them fiddle worms. I've explained why, because that's the technique that the old timers come up with to, to be able to get these to come out of the ground. It's called fiddling with a saw. This is, these worms right here have a particular smell about them. And shell cracker love them, but uh, I've done caught about seven or eight bluegill right here, real quick. I'm not sure if there's any shell cracker mixed up with them. A lot of times they'll mix up with them, and a lot of times they'll they'll crossbreed, and you'll have a beautiful fish between the two, and a hard pulling fish, may I add, and a good eating fish. But I don't believe there's any shell cracker on this bed right here. But there's plenty of bluegill. Look here. There he is. That little size eight hook that I have in that jig head, we may let this one go. This one is the smallest one I've caught yet. That size eight is a perfect size, I think. And even a size 10 works real well on these bluegill. Let's let that one go. That one, you could eat it if he was hungry, no doubt. But he ain't quite big enough. This is a little bitty reel. This is a Daiwa Reverus 1000 size, by the way. And this is a dock shooter made by All Star. Light as a feather. Great outfit for this application. They will not hit a jig. Just a single jig. I tried my best to get them to, but they, they would hit it, but they wouldn't obligate. But like I said, when they obligate on that bed, anything that comes across it to get killed, they're, they'll be in a different mood tomorrow. I've studied this for years. <laughs> it's strange. Even the juveniles is gathering around because they know what's fixing to happen. When those mature bluegill or shell crackers start laying eggs and little juveniles are hanging around to do what eat the eggs it's a brutal world out there there's another good one that one's stripping drag could this be a shell cracker fighting like one yeah little shell cracker
Yep, little shell daddy. Right there. I'm gonna let him go. They're gonna have to be big for me to keep them from here on out. Why the jig? Well, it really don't matter whether you got a single hook on there or a jig, it don't make any difference. Either way, I get it done. That one's fighting. That's probably a keeper yell. Come here. Would you quit? Strong little thing, that's really a good one. Here in the Tennessee River, they don't get very long, but they're just like our crappie. They, <laughs> they get girthy and wide. All right, let's put him in there. They're little stumps is what they are. Go on the back. Now these bluegill and shellcracker go on bed every full moon throughout the summer. That's why there's so many of them. Yeah, that's a good one. We're going to keep that one. That's a good one. Put him in the bucket. That old man knows everything. It don't make no bit of difference what you talking about, what you ask him. He knows everything about astronauts, physics, all that kind of stuff. Fishing, hunting. You just ask him, he'll tell you. He'll know a little bit more than what you know about it. I guarantee you. No Barshall. There's one. Yeah, we're getting down to the juveniles when they have to move. That's what I've been missing. And little dude, those are the ones that will eat the mommies and their daddies and their grandpa and grandma's eggs. Vicious. Mm -hmm. That's a shell cracker. They fight a lot different. Look at him. Than a bluegill does. They're a little bit stronger. That's a good size to eat right there. Look at there. That's actually a good shell cracker. I got a habit of calling them shell cracker, folks. <laughs> That's what we call them here in the south. They're actually red ear sunfish. Red ears. But uh, I, the, the name, no doubt, comes from they eat a lot of snails. And they have some crushers in the back of their throat. So I believe that's an appropriate name. There he goes. <clears throat> that might be him right there. That might be the one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good shell cracker. Quit. Look at there, what a shell daddy. That's number 30. Well, folks, let's check her catch out right here. There's 30 of them in there, exactly 30. Shell cracker and bluegill, good ones, delicious eating. There's a couple cold colors in there, and I bet they'd taste real good with that good slime on there. Well, folks, I tell you, ultralight fishing, well, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of different ways to catch these fish, as y'all well know. And every single way is fun. They're plentiful fish, plenty of them out here. They're just waiting to be caught because fishing is a sport second to none. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments, everything y'all do. Hey, whoa. I'm talking about woo.
And to remember, no patient went in care, nor called it good energy.